hello guys in this video we are going to do this problem which is from pathfinder again and which is from the chapter methods of impulse and momentum and check your understanding question number five and uh, i'll suggest you all to please go through the problem once because it's a very nice problem and if you directly look at its solution the all its fun will be lost so please look at it once it's one of the very uh, great problems from the book so yeah let's start Inclined face of a wedge is frictionless and its inclination is theta with the horizontal everywhere except at the bottom, where it increases gradually from vanishingly small value to theta in a very small region. The wedge is placed on a frictionless horizontal floor and a small disk is projected towards the wedge with an initial velocity u. Mass of the disk, mass of the disk is equal to that of the wedge. The disk slides up the inclined face and then slides down again. Assuming transit time of the disk on the curved entry to be negligible, find displacement of the wedge when the disk is at the highest position on the wedge. So, in this problem, uh, I have used two terms which might not known to be you, which are u is the, mu is the re reduced mass, and that for a two body system, it is m1 m2 over m1 plus m2, and kinetic energy of a system is half times mu times v relative squared plus half into m total into vcom score which which is applicable only for two body systems so first of all what we can observe here what is exactly is happening so the important part is it increases its slope gradually from zero to theta so in this region what we'll observe is that there will be an impulsive force because just before the collision uh, just before it uh, co comes in contact with the wedge and just after it comes in contact with the wedge the wedge uh, just after the contact the wedge and the particle will have some velocities and uh, the velocity of the uh, disk will have changed from u naught so here an impulse in y direction will be applied on the system so here we cannot conserve the momentum along y axis and here we will conserve energy and uh, momentum along the x axis. So uh, to find the velocity of the disk and the wedge just after the just after they come into contact we can write here is m uh, we have assumed the mass of the disk to be m and that of the wedge to be capital M, m u naught equals to and v1 is with respect to the wedge. So this gives us m times v1 cos theta plus vw1 plus capital M vw1. This is one equation. Now and uh, again now conserving energy we get half mu times u naught squared plus half into small m plus capital M into v total. initial squared will be equals to half into mu into v1 squared plus half into small m plus capital M multiplied by vx plus vy squared here I have written vx plus uh, sorry vx squared plus vy square here i have written vx plus square plus vy square because just after the collision the uh, system will also have some velocity in y axis but observe that as the momentum in x axis will be conserved so vx will be equals to v total initial so this term actually cancels out with this term so what we get here is half mu u naught squared equals to half mu v1 squared plus half times small m plus capital M into m v1 sine theta over small m plus capital M whole squared because this will be the uh, velocity of center of mass in the y axis. So from here we can simplify here uh, and we can get v1 uh, after simplifying we will get that v1 equals to u naught over root of 1 plus m sine square theta over capital M and similarly again uh, now substituting this value of v1 in uh, this equation in the equation of momentum conservation we can get the uh, velocity of wedge we get that vw1 
which is the velocity of wedge just after the that mu u not over capital m multiplied by 1 minus cos theta root of m over capital m plus m sin square theta i skipped some calculations in between because they were just getting too lengthy so uh, we found out the value of uh, the speed of the disk and that of the wedge just after they come into contact so now for any general case we can uh, write it uh, show show it as like this here uh, let's assume that the red represent time t not to be the time when the disk is uh, coming in first in contact with the wedge t1 is the time when it actually starts moving along the slope theta and uh, t2 is the time at which it attains the maximum height so let's assume at a general point the particle has a velocity v along along the incline with re which is with respect to the incline and uh, that of the wedge is vw at any general point so now uh, here first of all we can conserve the momentum so conserving momentum along the x axis we get just as uh, we did in, in uh, previously for finding v1 here we get that this is the first equation now uh, let us uh, separate this and we can get it like this mv cos theta plus m plus small m times vw equals to mu naught now our uh, end target is to find the displacement of the wedge so integrating this with respect to time what we get is m times integral v cos theta times dt from uh, now we are integrating we are integrating only from t1 to t2 because uh, t not to t1 we won't be get able to get very uh, this relation will, won't be appropriate to ta that time interval so we can get that t1 to t2 plus capital m plus small m times integral v w dt from t1 to t2 equals to m u not times integral dt from t1 to t2 so what we get from here is now uh, you can observe from here is that v not cos theta at any point is the velocity of the disk with respect to the incline in the x direction so basically the integral of, of v not cos theta will be x itself so this will give us m times displacement of wedge now uh, and that t2 it will be maximum displacement so i will just put max here plus capital m plus small m multiplied by again uh, vw dt will be the displacement of the wedge so i will represent it by xw equals to m u naught times t2 let's say this is equation 2 now in the end we need to find xw and uh, in this equation the only n unknowns are x max and t2 except xw so uh, first let's let's try to find x max and t2 for uh, this part so yeah for finding finding x max we can uh, simply use energy conservation and momentum conservation at the uh, at the point when it is at the max highest position so at the point of highest position uh, first of all, let's uh, li write the total initial energy, which is half times mu times u naught squared plus half times m total, or rather m plus small m multiplied by v total squared initially u naught by 2 whole squared, which is equals to half into mu into v relative squared is 0 squared and plus half into capital M plus small m into uh, u naught by 2 whole squared plus mgh now these two terms can simply you can see that they will be cancelled and we will get the height h max u naught square mu over 2 mg 
and from here we can get that x max is equals to h max over tan theta equals to mu u naught squared by 2 mg tan theta now we are left with finding t2 as we have found x max now we are only left with finding t2 so for finding t2 we can just write the equation of motion for the disk and uh, integrate it so the equation of motion for the disk will be minus g sine theta equals to uh, acceleration of the disk while it's climbing up on up, up on the slope here we can see that the acceleration will be g sine theta downwards right and acceleration can again be written as d by dt of its velocity and uh, its velocity at any v plus v w cos theta so here we get that integrating minus g sine theta dt from here we'll again integrate from t1 to t2 because we are interested in t2 and we cannot inter integrate from t0 because uh, it won't be the acceleration won't be g sine theta for that period is equals to integral from t1 to t2 d of v plus vw cos theta so from here we get that minus g sine theta into t2 minus t1 here t1 can be neglected as it's a very small value is equals to uh, v plus vw cos theta at t2 sorry t2 minus v plus vw cos theta at t1 and here we can observe that v at t2 is 0 so uh, g sine theta will be equals to v at t1 minus cos theta multiplied by a uh, vw at uh, t1 minus vw at t2 so uh, now and v at t1 we we found out earlier which was u naught by root of 1 plus m sine squared theta over capital m and uh, minus cos theta multiplied by uh, velocity of wedge at time t1 we found out to be mu u naught by capital m times 1 minus cos theta root m by capital M plus M sine square theta and uh, that at uh, when it is when it is at top it will be M u naught over small m plus capital M and you can observe that this one uh, or this term cancels with this term and uh, oh sorry I have missed a t2 here so and solving all of this in the end we get t2 I want I don't want to do this all in messy calculation it's very very messy and I might make uh, uh, there's a huge chance of me making a mistake so I'm just writing the expression which I got earlier sine square theta times capital M over capital M plus small m times g sine theta so yeah this is the final expression for t2 now we have found t2 we have found x max now we can simply found simply find out xw which will come out to be xw equals capital m small m u naught squared oh god u naught squared over 2 times capital m plus small m whole squared g multiplied by 2 over sine theta root 1 plus m over m sine squared theta minus cot theta now 
yeah this is very 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 horrible looking but yeah uh, and finally substituting small m equals to capital m we get x w to be u naught square over 8 g sin theta multiplied by 2 root 1 plus sin square theta minus cos theta so yeah that finishes the calculation it was a very nice problem hope you all liked it thank you